Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutation to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabal, back with another lesson, Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh, Bashem Yahushai, through the Holy Spirit, Rakakwadash, Lord willing to edify and strain to the point. This is going to be real quick. All right, from the new CNN politics entitled Juneteenth Becomes a Federal Holiday. All right, the, the devil over here and his sidekick, you know, made this made this thing a, a federal holiday, Juneteenth. And Juneteenth is the emancipation, all right, of of so of slaves, so to speak, or, or the Israelites. Now, before I read this, let me get something real fast. All right, it says Juneteenth, a holiday celebrated on the nineteenth on Ju on the nineteenth June to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved people in the United States, which were so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? Mainly, you had Judah, all right? Which you had all of Israel, but they focus in on, 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 the, on the southern kingdom, Judah, mainly Judah, all right? It says enslaved people in the U.S., it says the holiday, and key word here is emancipate. We're going to look at that real fast, too. It says the holiday was first celebrated in Texas where on that date in 1865, in the aftermath of the Civil War, slaves were declared free under the terms of under the terms of the 1862 Emancipation Proclamation. Now, when you look at the word emancipation, which through the spirit, the apostles, you know, went into this word, you know, years ago. It, um, it just means tra uh, transfer of ownership. And I'll show you right here. All right, because you got to understand the root word and the root meaning of words. Every word is compound words, which stems from the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin. In this case, you have the Latin origin, emancipate. It says from the Latin, all right, E, which out, emancipate slave. Um, It says right here, emancipium, which means slave. Latin, emancipate, emancipate, emancipate. Transfer as property. Transfer transfer as property. Okay, that's all emancipate means to transfer as property. Property. It says early 17th century from Latin emancipate. Transferred as prop property. Okay, transferred as property. So the emancipation of proclamation is just a transfer of property. All right, transfer from, uh, 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 of the slaves from the south to the north. That's all it was. All right, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the guise of freeing the slaves so they have more liberty and freedom to travel north and have opportunities so to speak all they all it was was a transfer of uh slavery just like how you go into the amendment i believe is the 13th amendment let me look it up real fast 13th amendment it says what does the 13th amendment say it says neither slave nor involuntary servitude unless or, or except as a punishment for crime Whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to the jurisdiction. All right. So the Emancipation Proclamation was just a transfer of slaves. All right. From the south to the north. All right. That's all it was. A transfer of power. All right. Or, or power over, over so-called slaves. And it says here, the 13th Amendment, that slavery will not exist unless except as a punishment for a crime where the party have been duly convicted, all right? So slavery still exists, all right? And it exists, it's all throughout the jail system. That's why the the mass majority population in jail in the prison system are Israelites, all right? The system was designed to keep you in prison, all right? To keep us in prison, all right? In order to, see, like the scripture said, that Esau frameth mischief by law, all right? And by law, and it also say in Isaiah that woe to them that prescribe a righteous decree, that right grievousness, which they have prescribed, which they write. All right. And that's all this devil's doing. You know, he, you know, he's crafty in his works. Okay. He's crafty in his work. Now you got this Juneteenth thing, which is now, um, a federal holiday. You know, it is a serpent, you know, buying people out. Israelites, simple Israelites out, making him think that he on a side, but really, it's all BS. If if you know, hey, the simple belief of every word, man. You know what I'm saying? And Esau ain't gonna free nobody. That's why the scriptures say that he opened if not the house of the prisoners. All right, Esau is not gonna uh free nobody. All right, just like Pharaoh, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart, 
even though Pharaoh wanted to um let the children of Israel go, the Most High is doing the same thing to 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 Esau, hardening his heart. All right, and Esau is not gonna let nobody go. Now, I just want to bring out one um, particular thing. I don't, I don't think it'll be a long lesson or nothing, but uh, um, let me go real quick to to um, Deuteronomy twenty-eight and sixty-eight. It says, "And the Lord Yahweh shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships." By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies for buying men and buying women. Now, in order to be sold, you got to be bought. You can't sell nothing if nobody's buying it. All right? Or else it's just sitting there in, in, in inventory. Okay? And I say that for, for this reason. It says, and there, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies for buying men and buying women. You're going to be sold for uh, slaves. Buying men and buying women as slaves. And no man shall buy you. All right, no man shall buy you. Now, really, the word "buy" it means to it means to be redeemed. It's it's, it's all like old English, which means to be redeemed. All right, because we were sold in in slave masters, slave captors. You know, they bought us, they purchased us. All right, like the scriptures say in Joel that they cast lots for my people. Casting lots is having setting up auction blocks, and the highest bidder takes the, the 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 slave. Okay, so when it says no man shall buy you. It means nobody's going to be able to redeem you, all right? Buy is old English, old speech, okay? Now, let's go back here real quick, all right? Buy, okay? This is a simple word, but when you look into it, it has deeper meanings behind it. Buy from the etymology online, it says, Old English, bike, bike, gun, past tense, both. Get by paying for, acquire, the possession of in exchange for something of like value. Redeem. It says redeem. Ransom. Okay. Redeem. Ransom. And it reads on. But redeem and ransom. Redeem and ransom. It says no man shall buy you in Deuteronomy 20 and 68. But then here it says redeem or ransom. Now, the scriptures don't contradict itself. We know that. You know what I'm saying? Type in the word Ransom. And you go to New Testament, it says, I'm going to start at Matthew 20 and 28. It says, even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Who's that many? Who's that he gave gave his, um, his life for? The Israelites. All right. It says, no man shall buy you in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Meaning nobody was going to be able to redeem you. All right. Or to, to release you out of captivity. So that whole proclamation emancipation is BS. Right. And according to the scriptures, nobody was going to be able, no man on this earth. All right. Except for, for the Lord, the son of man. All right. Esau, no other nation will ever be able to redeem us or buy us back. All right. So Mark 10 and 45, it says, for even the son of man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister. And to give his life a ransom for many. Ransom, that word again. All right, ransom. You know, something exchanged for something else. And in this case, the ransom was his life. All right? For the Israelites, Matthews 1 and 21, he shall save his people from their sins. Who was his people? And who was sin? Who was sin? Uh, or sin is what? Transgression of the law. And who was the law given to? The Israelites. So if he came to save his people from their sins, who are the ones that can sin? The Israelites. All right. First Timothy 2 and 6, who gave himself a ransom for all and to be testified in due time. And when it says all, it's talking about all the Israelites because this book is not for all people. All right. It's like I sent it's like I write a letter to somebody. I write a letter to a particular brother. All right. And the letter's for him only. And then somebody else intercepts that letter and start reading it, that letter does not apply to them just because they're reading it, all right? That letter is designed and set up for who it was set up for. So when I say all in that particular letter, that person that's reading it, who it was meant for, knows exactly who I'm talking about, all right? So the person that is not meant for is going to think all as in everybody, just like how the world thinks today, all right? When God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, the world is talking about the world of Israel, all right? And the all is talking about all the Israelites because this book is written for Israelites, Timothy and Israelite. All right. So that, that's that. I mean, you know, I mean, here it is. The heathens intercepted our, our books, our letters, and they reading it and they, they applying it to themselves. This is not this is not their book to begin with. 
This book is for the Israelites. So when it says all, is referring to all in whom it applies to. All right, not for everybody. This thing is exclusive. All right. Um, ransom. Let me see something real quick. Which these words we use all the time, words we know, but it gives a better, get better edifying. Um, when you you know going into the scriptures. So real quick, it says ransom. It says some pay for the release of a prisoner or captured man. Who's the prisoners? The Israelites. Who are the captured men? Scripture said, woe to them that um, he that leads into captivity, Revelation 11. Um, he that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. All right. It says also redemption from damnation. Redeemed us from our sins. Okay. That's the ransom. When it says nobody shall buy you. Me and nobody was going to be able to uh, be that ransom but Yahweh No man was going to be able to do that but Yahweh All right? So going back to this whole, you know, BS. Um, This whole BS about some Juneteenth. That's exactly it. That's, that's all it is, BS. All right? Biden signs bill into law making Juneteenth a national holiday. And, okay, so well, what does that mean? The real... So so called emancipation, not even emancipation, but the real freedom is going to be when our Lord come back and destroy this place. All right. Jeremiah, the 16th chapter. In verse 14. It says, therefore, behold, the days come, save the Lord, that it shall no more be said. The Lord liveth that brought up the children of the land. I mean, the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. It's no more going to be talked about the God of the God that re redeemed the children of Egypt, because all the nations knew about that. They knew they Egypt was a great empire, and there was always nations round about Egypt. It wasn't just Egypt and the Israelites, and that was the only people on the earth. All the nations were still there, and they heard about the downfall of Egypt, the great empire. All right, and and they knew about the power that did it, and the Israelites that did it. You know that that came that were redeemed by the heavenly Father. All right, so the the nations they gonna they gonna they ain't gonna be talking about ancient Egypt no more. It's gonna be a new talk of the town, so to speak. It says, "But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north." All right, the land of north, North America. We came over here in cargo slave ships. I read that in Jeremiah, um, Deuteronomy twenty eight and sixty eight. The land of the north, North America. This is the this is the place. This is the house of the prisoners. And from all the lands whither he had driven them, and not just North America, but all the lands where. The Heavenly Father have driven us as our punishment to dwell among the heathen nations and to be, you know, uh, all the curses of Deuteronomy to fall upon us. And I'll bring them again into the land that I gave unto their fathers because we had the land at one time, but we went off and the Lord, we got exiled out that land. So we're going to get it back this time. And this time we ain't never going to depart because the Lord is going to be in our inward part. So we're never going to sin, never going to go off and there's going to be no need to be cast out anymore. All right. But the Lord lived that brought the children from the land of Israel. Um, excuse me, let me read again. But the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north and from all the lands where he had driven them and now bring them into their land again, into their land that I gave unto their fathers. All right? And that's that's going to be the one who's going to redeem us, to buy us back, which Yahweh Shai already did that, to to, the, to start with the elect and ultimately Israel as a whole. When we, you know, when the two-thirds come back um, and, and as uh, newborn babes in the kingdom. All right? Hey, the Lord is going to have mercy on Israel. All right? Not the devil. Now, the devil is trying to win people's favor and trust. Scripture said, never trust thine enemy. All right? That's all he's doing. And the wicked is going to fall right into the snares of this devil. All right? <laughs> so, anyway, I just wanted to bring that out real quick as I read this article. So, low one, this was quick, edifying, straight to, straight to the point. Till next time, I say shalom to the elect. Shalom.